Good evening, everyone. I am Carolina, and it's a pleasure to introduce you to our first speaker of the evening, but also of the whole event. Uh, his name is Jean-Francois Guiglion. And first of all, thank you very much, uh, Jean-Francois, for being here with us, uh, giving us a talk. Uh, we are looking forward to it. Uh, so Jean-Francois is actually not joining us from Germany. He's uh, joining us from France, from a city called um, benouille sur mer I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly. <laughs> uh, he's a senior scientist and director of research at the French National Center for Scientific Research. He's also the coordinator of the mission Microplastics by the Tara Foundation, which we are going to hear about uh, in a minute. And finally, he's also the co-founder of the startup Plastic at Sea. And today he's going to talk to us about how much science can help to find solutions to plastic pollution. And I don't want to take more of his time. So Jean-Francois, the stage is yours. And thank you very much again. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for this uh, nice introduction and, and thank the, the organizer for the, this nice initiative of uh, Pit of Science. My idea is really to explain you a little bit uh, what is the plastic pollution? You know more or less, but uh, I, I will give you more insight on this. And then I'm really open to question to discuss together what solution we can find. So um, I will organize my talk in three parts. The first part is um, telling you a problem that we have in science uh, about the plastic. It's the missing ocean plastic sink. Uh, so the question is, where does the plastic go? And we don't know exactly, you will see. The second part will be the solution to the plastic uh, pollution. And uh, then we will ask the curious question about, it is, is it a myth or is it really a reality? Are we able to, to find solution to the plastic solution? And then I, I would like to focus on, on one aspect, which is the biodegradable plastics. And uh, I would like to help you to distinguish the true from the false old. So let's go first to the, to the first part. So the, the, the problem we have with the missing ocean plastic sinks, that's the way we call it, is that the way we look at the plastic at the surface of the ocean, we realize most of the time that we are in the top of the iceberg. Actually, we know that most of the plastic is coming from the land, you know, from the rivers, and the contribution of the continents is 99% of what we found uh, in, in, in the surface ocean. Actually, we found only 1% in the surface ocean. So then it's open many different questions. Where does the plastic go? And uh, is it stranding? Is there any ingestion by animals? Uh, is, it, is it only sinking in the sediments? Is there any fragmentation when we, then, then it goes to be so little that we cannot see it anymore? Or is there any biodegradation? This is the five stuff that I'm, I'm gonna explain you now before the second, the second part. So the first part is, is uh, how much, what is the contribution of the, of the ingestion of, uh, by animals? So you probably heard about this, but uh, you, you have probably have, have seen this kind of picture, but you know that there are a lot of animals that are eating plastic. And uh, we know that the estimate numbers are 1.4 million seabirds that are dead because of ingestion every year and we have 14,000 mammals every year that are dead because of plastic. We found plastic everywhere in the stomach, you know, and then they, they cannot eat anymore. And then they are just dying. Uh, we did an expedition in 2014 and we found that maybe you heard about the seven continents, but actually the Mediterranean Sea that is really close to my place is the most polluted area, most polluted sea in the world. And we found that in some places in, in the Mediterranean Sea, we have as uh, much microplastic as the zooplankton. Maybe you, you know the zooplankton, that's the small animals that the, the fish are eating. So you can imagine that in the plate of the fish, you have half of plastic and half of the food, you know? Uh, so this is the, 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 the amazing amount of plastic that we found in the, in the Mediterranean Sea. Actually, it's the maximum numbers that we found. Most of the time, it's 15%, but it's already a lot. And, and what is interesting is that we found plastic uh, in all the animals in all along the trophic chain. 
uh, we found plastic in their stomach. And we, we uh, characterize 114 marine species that have plastic in their stomach. And we know that half of them are part of our meals. So that gives the, the question about what the quantity of plastic that we are all eating also. Okay, the, the second stuff is that uh, we, we imagine that part of the plastic is sinking in, uh, in the sediment, you know, in the, in, the, in, 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 the, in the deep ocean. And uh, I just mentioned here a really nice uh, uh, work that has been done by Ifremer. Uh, and they did 15 years of monitoring in the Mediterranean Sea and also in the Atlantic. And they can, they can estimate that these thousands of tons of plastic, and when you see the picture, it's really amazing the quantity of plastic that you, you, you found downstairs. And um, this means that uh, a large proportion of the plastic is really sinking in the sediment, but it's much more complicated, you know, to know exactly where they are going because they are canyon, there are different places where they go, and um, it's much more difficult to estimate the, the quantity of plastic uh, downstairs, but we know that there is a lot. Another stuff is it, and, and it's a poorly explored hypothesis, is the fragmentation. You maybe heard about the fact that uh, we are looking at the microplastic because that's the one that are found in, all along the trophic chain. And um, the, the microplastic, the definition of the microplastic is, is only on the size. We define them because they are less than five millimeter. And, um, but as a scientist, we, we decide to, to share this, this um, this uh, size into three different sizes. We call the large microplastic from one millimeter to five millimeter. And then we know that this fragmentate again, and it goes to small microplastics. Small, so, small microplastics are one millimeter to one micrometer. And uh, that they contain, for example, the fever, the fever, sorry, from, from your clothes, but also all the ones that are, that are fragmented from the big pieces of the big debris. And now we are exploring uh, what we call the nanoplastic. That's the one that are less than one micrometer. And interestingly enough, we focus on this small microplastic and we, we prove with some colleagues that uh, the small microplastic at, are much more uh, uh, numerous. They are 100 times to 100,000 times more than large microplastic, you know, the one from one to five millimeter. So this, these fibers and this, this, uh, this fragmented uh, microplastic, amazingly, they are the same mass than the large microplastic. So meaning that we are really underestimating the quantity of plastic that are in the ocean because we don't see them. And uh, also um, we are beginning to have some numbers about the nanoplastic. But the problem with the nanoplastic is that we have a lot of contamination to deal with, and it's not so easy to, to, to quantify them. So today, we, we don't know exactly the quantity of nanoplastic, but we know that there are a lot too. OK, next is the biodegradation. As you can see here, uh, this is plastic that I found you know, in front of my place. I mean, I'm really close to the sea. And every time I go to the sea, I find plastics when I'm, when I'm putting my, my nets you know, behind, my, behind the boat. And when I bring it back to the lab, I put it on, under the loop, and then this is what I see. As you can see here, a plastic, as soon as it arrives in the environment, it's colonized by microorganisms. And we call these microorganisms the plastisphere. That's the microbial life on plastics. And little by little, we understand the different step of biodegradation. So I explain you a little bit how it works. First, there is a biofilm that is growing on the plastic you know, just a biofilm. And because the biofilm exists, they love to make cracks, you know, on the plastic because they are growing and growing and, and they, 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 they are just making cracks. This is what we call biodeterioration. They participate to the fragmentation. And this is true. And the other thing is that as soon as a, a bacteria is, is trying to find food, they are putting enzymes outside of their cells. We call them extracellular enzymes. And this is these extracellular enzymes that are, you know, left in the environment, in the biofilm that attacked the plastic. And we call it biofragmentation because, you know, the plastic are made of polymers. So the polymers are biofragmented by this enzyme to oligomers and then monomers. So it, it, it's like a, a, a piece of spaghetti, you know, the, with scissors, it just cut the, the spaghetti. And then you have 
tiny pieces that we call monomers, and they are so small that they, they can enter the cells. And this is what we call assimilation because they, it enters the cells and then the bacteria are really eating the plastic and, and produce CO2 and, and uh, consume oxygen, ATP and, and uh, amino acid. So the, the mineral, mineralization, this is the last step. And this is the step we use usually to prove the biodegradation of different plastics. Okay, by saying this, uh, you have to know that um, we found this uh, different step in the laboratory condition with culture bacteria, you know? And uh, today we are managing more and more with different tools to, to prove the biodegradation of different kinds of plastic, but actually it's, it works. Uh, the bacteria are really eating plastic, but it takes really, really long times. And they really prefer the organic matter that is covering the plastic, rather than uh, degrading the plastic. So this is why we estimate by, that the biodegradation of the classical plastic, the conventional plastic made of polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, for example, it takes decades to, to, to degrade by bacteria. So meaning that the bacteria cannot help uh, really the, the, the degradation of, of the plastic. They contribute to it, but the, it's too long to, for them to make it. Okay, so uh, another thing is, is maybe we are wrong from the beginning by the estimation of the quantity of plastic that is entering uh, in, in the sea. Actually, the estimation is that 80% of the ocean waste are coming from the continent. And more or less, this is true. Uh, and but maybe it's the estimation that we have. We estimate between four to 12 million tons per year that are entering the ocean. Eight million tons is one dump tramp per minute. So you imagine the quantity of plastic that is arriving in, in the ocean. Uh, generally, we, we are talking about, you know, the, the the garbage that you have, 10% of your garbage is going to the sea. So, uh, I, I mean, worldwide, you know, depending of the, the collection of the, of the, of the debris, etc. But, uh, but it's, a, it's a large part of our, of our garbage that are entering the sea. But the thing is that it's, it, this estimation are made by uh, mathematicians and, and modelers. And they are calculating the mismanaged uh, plastic waste that taking into account the human development index and the watershed and etc., And then they are giving this estimation. It's not estimation that are from, uh, you know, uh, real data. And uh, what we are saying is that there is really too little field data available in rivers. So this is why we make this expedition in 2019. And uh, we begin by Europe. Uh, we went to nine different rivers, the main different rivers in Europe. So we went to the Thames, Elbe, Rhine, Seine, Loire, Garonne, Ebro, Rhone, Tiber. And then we, we, we quantified the plastic there. This, this was organized by the Tara Ocean Foundation again. And uh, it involved more than 45 scientists and 17 laboratories. And I was the coordinator of this. And the whole idea were uh, just to compare the estimation that we have, uh, you know, by mathematician to the real truth that we, what we found in the rivers. And the idea were uh, to identify the source, to quantify the fluxes, and also to predict the fate of this uh, by the currents, you know, in the, in, the, in the ocean. And also to evaluate the impact of plastic on biodiversity in this uh, land sea continuum. The first result that we got uh, is that uh, uh, unfortunately, 100% of the European rivers are really polluted, and we find uh, plastic everywhere. Uh, that, that was the, the same stuff for the ocean. Every time we go to the ocean, we find plastic. So it was not really a surprise to find, to find plastic from the rivers, but, uh, but the quantity were really amazing. And um, another aspect that we didn't expect it, because we found that uh, we, we expected that the, that the big uh, debris, you know, were coming to the sea and then degrade in, in, at the sea. And actually what we found is that most of the plastic were already in the form of microplastic, meaning that the fragmentation uh, processes are already present in rivers. So the fragmentation we know more or less of how it works, it's erosion, UV, biofragmentation, as I told you. And, um, but uh, that means that uh, it's, not all, it's not the coastal area that pollute the sea, you know. The, the plastic has really long life. It, it, it can reach, for example, yeah, more than, more than 100 years. 
and in 100 years it can come to the mountain you know and, and arrive by the river and arrive at, at the ocean at the end so the, the consequences of this finding is really bad because, because we, we can expect, for example, to clean the rivers, but actually if, if they are in the form of microplastic, you cannot, you cannot take them. You, it's almost invisible pollution and it's in, just impossible to collect. So the, the situation is really that, okay, when we think about the solution, never think about cleaning the ocean, never think about cleaning the rivers, the solution are on land. So the, the solution, you, you maybe heard about that, but uh, you know, the circular economy. So I'm, I'm not giving you, I'm not gonna give you a, um, a presentation of the circular economy, but uh, I really love this paper that was published in Science last year because there's some hope in, in, this, uh, in this paper. It was published by Lowe and Al. And uh, so you have the, the name if you want to read it. And uh, they, they, were, they were, again, uh, modelers and mathematicians working together with, with uh, field scientists, uh, like I am. And, um, and together, we, we were making different scenario. The first scenario is, for example, if, if we keep business as usual, you know, like the, the European directive and et cetera, but, but not doing more than this, then we estimate by uh, 2040 that the pollution will increase by three again. And amazingly, if we make concerted action, the reduction of the plastic pollution will be almost 80%. So meaning that we have everything in hand today to remove the pollution by 240, you know? So um, the challenge is uh, really to act on the three pillars of the circular economy. So I'm not gonna, gonna, gonna give you a course about circular economy, but you have to know that there are three pillars. The first one is the offer by economic players. So I put in, the, in that the industry, but also the government but that make law to make, to make the project uh, you know, available and, and, uh, and commercial, and also the scientific innovation. And you will see that we can play really a big role on this. There's also the second part is the consumers. So uh, we have to make uh, a choice when we're going to, for shopping, are we choosing uh, you know, the the, the, the project with a lot of plastic on it. And also we have to reduce our, our, our consumption and reuse. And the third one is the recycling. But today the recycling is really bad. There's maximum 30% recycled, but, but uh, there's another 30% that is dumped and 40% that is incinerated. So the, the recycling today is, has to improve. And what I like in this paper is that uh, they, they just show that we really have to work together. It's not only the consumers, it's not only the industry, it's not only the recycling, but the three of them have the, the power in their hand to remove the, the plastic pollution. So to me, my role here is really to promote the link between scientific innovation, companies, and legislation. And this is what we did. Uh, uh, we, we, had, we had this initiative in France that is called Polymer and Ocean. And the idea is to federate all the scientists that are working on plastics. And actually in France, we are 220 researchers from 50 laboratories in France. And we, we managed to make Congress together, to make workshop together, to, to increase our capability to, to work on plastic together, you know, because we really need a multidisciplinary approach. I'm a biologist, but I, I'm working on plastic. I need physician, I need chemist, I need oceanographer, I need many different fields. And it's important to work together. And we managed to make it. So I was quite proud of this. And the second thing that we did is, is okay, scientists working together is one thing, but we have to federate also researchers, industries, and also the non-governmental organization. And this is what we did uh, together with Taroshan again, but also with the Soft Rider Foundation. And we managed to bring together big companies like Chanel, Aribo, Veolia, Carrefour, and etc. And big companies that were that were with that. I mean, actually, they are really afraid today uh, because because the because of the European uh, you know um, directive and and because the consumers want want stuff to change. You know, so now they have to change also, and they have to find new solution for their plastic bag for their for their for for all their projects that are made of plastic. So we are helping them. We are helping them on on this aspect. Uh, with the scientist group. Another aspect is uh, 
we are also together again with Foundation Tara and Sharon. I'm not, uh, I'm really part of this, uh, this foundation as a scientist, huh? you know, I, I don't have action on this, but uh, they are making many stuff on plastic. So uh, we're also making participatory science. And uh, this year we had 100 uh, schools. Last year we had 60 schools since, uh, so 2019. And uh, we are mm, making them going, I mean, we have many discussion with them, but also we are making them uh, going on the field and, um, and, and just sampling uh, plastic. But we make them with a protocol that help us to find to make a really database in the today it's only in France uh, of plastic waste uh, of the river banks and beaches and we are using really the, this data and we are publishing these results so that's really really nice for for the for the young people to get involved in this publication and and understand that uh, yeah they can help science also and 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 it's a nice way for us to introduce them to the solution and to the question of the plastic pollution. Okay, let's go now to the, to the fruit part because I wanted, uh, I wanted to, to focus on this and maybe it will be helpful for the discussion uh, about the biodegradable plastics. So um, I, I tell you this story, it was, oh, I think uh, four or five years ago, the French government, uh, they just called me uh, and then they, they, they asked me, okay, we we're gonna stop some some um, some some conventional microbeads. You you heard of this, about this? We we stopped you know the plastic bag. We stopped the the microbeads. We we stopped also the cotton bags and etc. And they they were asking, okay, we're gonna stop this, but do you know any biodegradable alternative? And then to explain you a little bit, as you can see in this graph, um, there are the non-biodegradable, the one on the left, and the biodegradable one on on the right. And they're, they're, oops, came back. They're what we call the fossil based that are made of hydrocarbons and the bio based that are made from, uh, from starch, for example, or from agriculture or something else. And um, we, we have different kinds of polymers, for example. We can, we can, we can today make uh, polyethylene from bio based, that, that's a possibility. And we can have some uh, fossil based that are you know, not so good because they are coming from hydrocarbons, but that are biodegradable. So this is what, what we tested. And um, we tested different kind of, of product to try to find an um, alternative to the microbeads. And what we found, you know, it, uh, we, we, we had to, to make this measurement. And this is why I, I grew this, uh, this group of researchers because we need multidis multidisciplinary approach. So we need microscopy to understand the biodeterioration. We need the biofragmentation to look at the oligomers and monomers, you know, of the of the polymers. We we need chemical analysis and we need microbiology together with uh, molecular ecology. And then we we understand more or less what's going on in the in nature because we are not working in the lab anymore. We are really working on the field to understand the biodegradation really at sea. So. Uh, I'm not going into details on this, but uh, as you can see, I like the, the picture on the top left. When you can see, for example, that the rice, the abrico are really good, uh, good uh, substitute for the macrobids. But we can also use the PHBV, for example. The PHBV is it's a good one because it's made from the bacteria. You, you, make, you make the bacteria growing and, and this kind of bacteria uh, are able to make polymer and we can use them. And because we can, we can use this polymers made from bacteria, the bacteria that are on the sea really love to eat it. So the PHBV is really something that is working well. And the PCL, for example, you can see the, the bacteria that are really entering it. And I, I like to, 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 to show you this because then it's a good illustration of, of the fact that bacteria can really eat some of the polymers. So we did different stuff. And, and by showing this, we were able to find, you know, a level of biodegradability. For example, the polyethylene, it's a classical uh, plastic that is that is made for plastic bag, for example. This one is really recalcitrant, the PMMA also, and the PLA, you know the PLA, maybe it's, it's uh, because it's the one that is compostable. But compostable means that uh, it has to go to, um, to temperatures that are more than 50 degrees, which is completely different to what we found in the environment. So actually the PLA is uh, biodegradable. It's not biodegradable, but it's biosourced. So meaning that bio-based does not always mean biodegradable, you know. 
And we found, for example, that the PCL that is preterous uh, is biodegradable. So what, what is the best, you know? So maybe the best is to find by source and biodegradable as the PHBV or choose the, the classical stuff like the rice and the abricot. So this kind of studies help us to help the, the French government to, to make this decree in 2014 about the macrobeads. And we did the same uh, with the cotton buds. So we did a, a full experiment on this and we find different substitutes for, for like the, P, the PBAT, the matter B, the bioplast and PHPV again, that were really, really good substitute to cotton buds. Okay, so meaning that there are solution, it exists and we can really make a biodegradable plastics. Okay, um, I'm just uh, telling you a word about, about the company that we that we built together with a, a good friend of mine, Anne Laila Master, Master Time. We made this startup uh, in 2019 and it's growing well because, because the, we are now 14 people in Banyuls. And the whole idea is to bring, you know, the, the research uh, from the academic research to the industry and guiding the companies towards the eco design. So, um, because we develop really new protocols, we have really inno innovative in, uh, solution for the, what I call the plastic condition. So we are providing uh, toxicity tests and uh, we are looking at the bio, bio accumulation of the plastic from on, on different animals, like the muscle, for example. And um, we are doing biodegradation tests. So uh, meaning that as soon as they have the product, then uh, that we discuss together about the, the, the what we call the plastic condition. Then we test their product to see if they are really biodegradable at sea and if they are not toxic, because it's really important that they are not toxic. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you have a thousand questions about that.